Now to a Target 12 investigators exclusive. New Bedford is America's number one fishing port, but some of the industry's leaders say the threat of soon to be built wind farms may put their way of life at risk. This is the ultimate. This is the war and you're, we're going to lose. It's a looming battle between the wind and fishing industries where the front lines are on the docks of New Bedford. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor joins us now with why this tension is getting national attention. The number one fishing port and the number one location for wind energy nationwide. Mayor John Mitchell says New Bedford can be both, but he acknowledges a recent report shows something's got to give. This looks really good. Cassie Canastra shows Target 12 what's fresh off the fishing boat. Today's catch, scallops, which she says makes up about 65% of the family-run business. I could do over 200,000 pounds in one day on an auction. Today was a slower day. I had one boat with just 18,000 pounds. Bay Seafood is an electronic seafood auctioning company that was started by Canastra's father and uncle in 1994. 5,000 pounds at, at best. And the company's director of operations is part of a new generation that's beginning to make its mark in New Bedford's historic seafood industry. It's been my life. Everything like seafood's what I know. But a recent Bloomberg report shines a light on a growing tension. The U.S. government approved the South Fork wind farm, shown here in red, despite warnings from government scientists that the wind farm would threaten populations of cod and other fish species. The big issue, its location, with the 12 wind turbines set to be built on Cox Ledge, a vital breeding ground in the area. How do you fight that? Canastra says the revelation hit close to home. 35% of base seafood's business are fish like cod, haddock, and halibut. It almost feels like it never mattered, like all the work we've done to be conservationists. New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell says he wants New Bedford to become the nation's leader in offshore wind, but he recognizes problems between the fishing and wind industries still exist. I think the Cox Ledge experience does speak to the need for heightened uh, scientific analysis. In response, South Fork Wind says in a statement, we take great care to ensure that offshore wind and wildlife coexist and thrive. The federal lease area designated by the federal government purposely carved out portions of Cox's Ledge from the outset to reduce potential impacts to habitat and fishing activity. Mitchell remains optimistic. Largest fishing port in America, leader in wind energy, are those two things in conflict? We have been dedicated to the proposition that the two industries can coexist successfully. Do you think those two things are compatible? I mean, I will tell you probably not. Coming up at 6, Mayor Mitchell calls for changes in how wind farms are approved. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tolly Taylor, 12 News. New details now in a Target 12 investigators exclusive. New Bedford, America's top fishing port, is becoming the epicenter of conflict between the fishing industry and the growing wind industry. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor talked to New Bedford's mayor about changes he wants to see. Mayor John Mitchell says he's optimistic the two industries can work together. But he also says choosing where wind farms go needs to be handled differently. We sold one lot at 1325. Bay Seafood Director of Operations Cassie Canastra says she's been around the fishing industry since she was a kid, when she would use days off from school to tag along with her dad at the family-run business, a seafood auctioning company based in New Bedford. I'm very, very passionate about it. I'm passionate about our community. But while she's accustomed to dealing with federal regulations on fishing, which she finds frustrating, navigating the wind industry feels different as it expands into areas that are vital fishing grounds. It's defeating. A recent Bloomberg News report finds the South Fork wind farm, scheduled to be built off the coast of Rhode Island, was approved by federal regulators despite warnings from U.S. government scientists about its effect on cod and other fish populations. New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell says it highlights the the need for change. And the habitat designations have to be taken seriously. We made real progress together. To meet President Biden's goal of 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030, Mitchell says scientific scrutiny has to dictate the approval process. An awful lot of analysis on the impacts of uh, on commercial fishing has to, has to happen uh, immediately. Is that something you'd support? Uh, absolutely. I think and it's, and it's crucial for the mayor to, to come out and say that. Eric Reed is a member of the New England Fishery Management Council, established by federal legislation in 1976. And he says the council also warned federal regulators about damage to the fish habitat. Having your input ignored is uh, pretty commonplace, so it's not any big shock to us. Does the council hope to see changes before 
the project is actually built. If history repeats itself, uh, nothing is going to change. In response, wind farm developer South Fork Wind says in a statement, we take great care to ensure that offshore wind and wildlife coexist and thrive. The federal lease area designated by the federal government purposely carved out portions of Cox's Ledge from the outset to reduce potential impacts to habitat and fishing activity. If the project does harm fish populations, Mitchell says he'll take action. The last resort is, is litigation, but you know everything has to be on the table. Canastra says the solution should be simple. Don't build wind turbines where commercial boats go fishing. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tali Taylor, 12 News.